Okay, we have removed, these are our mains, go in a case. The other screws that go on the outside are the mating flange screws. Uh, they just basically seal the outside of it, make sure it's all pulled in tightly and uniformly across the, uh, across the flange of the cap. I like to call this the cap, I don't know why. All it comes it's like the top of the block, but uh, you lay it on the side, it's basically you know, top of the cap, whatever. So, double check. Make sure all the screws are out of there, this thing should. No, it ain't gonna do it. So, here's a rubber mallet here. Make sure you use a rubber mallet. And there we go. Now this cap, we will, uh, first we're gonna take, walk this screw there. First we're gonna have to take a look inside here. When these 60 degree motors come apart, um, this, this aluminum in here is so thin, a piece of rod or um, a piece of ring or anything like that, once this crankshaft travels back around, can get trapped in between there and the edge of the cap and punch a hole in it. Um, in that case, then what we do is uh, we send it out to an aluminum repair shop and have uh, and have the spot repaired. <laughs> this one looks good, so uh, we're going to set it to the side. And clean that up in the future. Okay. There's nothing holding this crankshaft in there except for uh, it's just in there. So once I start tearing this apart, it's all going to want to fall out. Before I do that, let me give me a uh, block of wood. I'm going to lay this thing on its back. See, it's a uh, little uh, three by six or whatever. Works pretty well to support these things. Connecting rods is very important. This connecting rod is manufactured exactly like this block is manufactured. They manu they they cast it and then they split it. So the cap on each connecting rod has to stay on its respective connecting rod because it's an exact split piece. You'll notice when you pull these apart that the edges are jagged. They're not nice smooth edges and that hadn't been cut. It's been actually snapped. They put it in a machine and a hydraulic press snaps the thing in half and there you go. You've got two sides that match each other exactly. I number all these and as I take them out individually I put it back together. I leave no chance to getting these mixed up. Uh, when you're putting it back together, you can tell. You'll be able to look at it. You'll be able to tell which side it goes on. You'll be able to, I mean, because you know they're, you know, they're going to fit together like they came apart. But you definitely want to keep them all organized like they're supposed to be. Um, also requires a special socket. I mean, it's, it's not really that special. It's a 12.516. Not really that special of a socket, but still. These, these screws are in there at about, uh, probably right around 30 foot pounds. I just take and uh, on my half to my three eighths and three eighths a quarter. And I cross my fingers I don't break my socket. When I do, however, I always get tools that are guaranteed. That way I can blame it on this tool and take it back and get it. Done. Okay. These are your rod bearings. The bearings look pretty new, look like a pretty good shape. I'm going to make sure I'm going to 
look at these a little closer and compare them with an Evinrude bearing to make sure that these are an Evinrude bearing. The color of the casing looks a little bit off, so that way I'm a, I'm a little bit suspect that this might be an aftermarket part. I'm going to do a little bit more investigating after the fact here to make sure that that is indeed a genuine Johnson Evinrude part. This one will just come back, come down out of there, pop out of the hole. You see, this is a uh, you see the scoring in it. these come apart and go back together. You look at this edge where they match together. It's split right at that point. <clears throat> if you can't tell how it goes on this way or this way, if the split is more straight, there's two index tabs right there. You line your index tabs up, <clears throat> you know you're good. That's that's how it goes back together. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this. Make sure it stays together in one piece so I don't have to look around later. I don't have to sit there and scratch my head and wonder. It saves a lot of time. A lot of guesswork, right? Take the guesswork out, right? Good. So. Down. Now, you look at the difference in the color of these two. Now you all might understand why I was thinking that this might not be an Evinrude bearing. The more I look at it, the more I think it's not. I think this one is and this one isn't. There is no identif identifying numbers or markings are on it, but I can tell on inspection that in comparison it's different. So I believe that that is not a factory part. index tab. Sometimes they're small. Sometimes they're very small. I have taken these motors apart and I've had people um, I've taken these motors apart and had people that uh, built them before that, that didn't uh, didn't know that these are uh, these are matched and it's then that one rod goes you know rod and a cap are born together they need to stay together and I've actually had these things put on backwards and stuff like that so it's something you really want to really want to take care take extra special time to make sure that the person before you didn't put together a mismatch set. Being real friendly here. There we go. It's very important you don't force anything when you're putting this stuff back together. Since most of this stuff's going to get replaced, I'm not going to worry about number or anything. As long as I take each rod out. Immediately match it to the cap. I'm okay. This one here, Evinrude bearing. All these are Evinrude bearings. Not an Evinrude bearing. Index points up. 